Okay, welcome back, High Tech Studios. Perfect. So, what I like to talk about is a method that I've been using with my students that really helps take the stress out of learning a tune, especially if they have uh, to deal with chords that they haven't seen a lot. And this is good. This is good for a tune where maybe you have a measure. There's a, there's a chord for every measure. There could be a chord for every two beats. Uh, but maybe they don't know the chord that well, so they see all this information. And maybe the tune is a tune that you play fast. There's another thing. Let's say you're playing Cherokee. Well, because that tune is played fast, you tend to think you need to learn the tune fast. And that's the problem. That's one of the big stumbling blocks in learning a tune. Don't worry about learning the tune fast. In fact, don't even worry about learning the tune slow. Learn the tune without any tempo at all. Okay? Someone, I think, called this fermata exercise, where essentially you're putting a fermata over every chord in the tune. You could spend as much time as you want with, with, with these chords. All right? This way you get to know them. And what you're going to do is you're going to do three things. You need to A, one, A, make a decision what the notes are going to be. Because sometimes you'll have a chord, like a major chord, there are a couple choices you could make. Uh, there's more than one choice for a chord. Minor has, that has even more options. And when you get the dominant, it's, you know, forget about it. It's all, you have so many options in, with dominant because you can alter so many notes in it. So you need to make a decision. So you decide what the notes are going to be. Two, you drill it. And I'll show you what that is. And three, you create on it. Make the decision what the notes are, drill that, create off it. All out of time. No tempo. I mean, you could play with some tempos in, in and out, but I'll show you what I mean. We're not worried about going through the tune yet. We're not even thinking about the tune. We're going to spend time, and we're going to hang out and get to know. <laughs> we're going to go out to lunch with all these chords. We're going to just get to know them. You know, get a relationship going with these chords. All right, so let's say the first chord is uh, G major. So the first thing I want to do is make the decision what the notes will be. So 1, 3, and 5, pretty straight ahead, G, B, D. Alright, I'll play it up and down. Now I'm going to add the 7th. So in major, that would be F sharp. I'm going to add the 9th. Okay, now the 11, which is this, that's a C, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, this 11. In major, one of the options we have is we can plus the 11. And what that does is that gives you a brighter major, makes it sound uh, a, a little brighter, it's called Lydian, and also you don't have to worry about any of the notes being tricky to deal with. Sometimes if you use the natural 11, you have to give it a little special care. You, you have to make sure that you're aware of how it sounds. It could, it could lead you into a little bit of a problem if you're not careful. You can still use it, but when you make it a plus 11, then that note is good too. You can use that and not worry about it. So, one, three, five, seven, nine, plus eleven. Okay, now I'm going to add the thirteenth, which is E. There you go. One, three, five, seven, nine, plus eleven, thirteen. That's it. So I get nine, eleven, and thirteen. I bring them down an octave. I tuck them in between one, three, seven, and five, and that's a scale. Scale, chord. Scale, chord. Chord, scale. Chord, scale. That's why they call it chord scale. Same information. Just arranged different. So now the scale will sound like this. So boom, number one, I've made the decision what the notes are going to be. All right, so what did that take? Two minutes? It may take longer because you have a lot of options. Um, the next thing I'm going to drill it. So I wrote down a couple drills here, and I'll put this in a little tag underneath the uh, clip so you can see it. But uh, so I'm going to drill it up and down, one, three, five, seven. Don't worry about being fast. Don't worry about being fast. That'll foul you all up. That'll get you thinking. Oh, if you try to do things too quick, you get freaked out. I've seen it happen. It's not pretty. So now I'm going to go to the nine. One, three, five, seven, nine. I'll go to the plus 11. Now I'll just go to the 13. I don't think maybe lyrical. 
I'm just learning it, okay? Now, some of these exercises some of these exercises might not be good for brass instruments because they have a they have to deal with certain things with range, you know. So this right right off the bat we have an octave and a sixth by playing a thirteenth chord. So if you play a brass instrument, all the stuff still applies, but you find a different way to drill it that fits your instrument, okay? Keep that in mind. A lot of times, uh, theory has to be adapted for certain instruments. Uh, okay, so now we have the scale, up and down. I'll do the scale in thirds. I'm just drilling it. I'm trying to put the scale in a bunch of different shapes so when I go to create on it, I'm familiar with doing things to it. Okay? Scale in thirds. Okay? Uh, and there's a really good, get Jamie Ambersold's scale syllabus where Dave Liebman goes through the scale syllabus and he plays the scale one time very easy, lyrical, simple, and then he gets into it. And when he gets into it, you don't even recognize the scale. He's throwing all these great shapes on it because shapes really can make you sound modern or old-fashioned or it, it, it leads you into different ways of creating. It's great. The scale syllabus, check it out. It's really good. And, uh, all right, so let's do, uh, here's another shape, different shape. <laughs> Okay, mess with that a little bit. And then here's another shape. I'll just play triads, of, like a triads of the scale. Sounds like this. All right, so what I did is I, I made the decision, G Lydian, and then I just drilled a couple different shapes so I kind of know it. Now I'm going to go to the third step, and that is I'm going to create on it. Okay, and this is a nice way to kind of get started, especially when I teach students who really haven't listened to this music a lot, but they like to get involved in creating. There's nothing, you can't beat listening to this music. I mean, you can't do it, with, it doesn't work unless you listen. Uh, listen to great players play and study how they solo. But to get creating, sometimes we can get the juices flowing if we just have a, like a technique to get going. So I'm going to use this shape that shape, and I'm going to create on it. So instead of just creating and doing whatever I want, I'm going to um, I'm going to use that particular drill as sort of home base, and I'm going to get that drill and mess with it. I'm going to play with that drill. I'm going to create off of that drill. All right. <laughs> Okay, this way that drill gives me a little bit of a guide. I can still do what I want, but I do what I want with that drill. Now I'm going to just do kind of whatever I want. I'm not going to necessarily think about a drill. And what's cool about this, Ernie Watts, a great sax player, you should check out his clinic. Check it, type in Ernie Watts, and he talks about, uh, you know, once you learn the chord scale, I think this is great. He says, once you learn the chord scale, then the rest is multiple choice. Meaning, once you know the right notes, how you, how you want to blow on it is completely up to you. You can be aggressive, lyrical, you can do all kinds of things. Because you're free harmonically once you know what it is. So here I'm going to make up whatever I want just using that scale. No tempo. There you go. And I could do that as long as I want. And let's see, we spent about six minutes on one chord. Now we'll go to the next chord and we'll do the same thing. And this way we're spending as much time as we need on that chord so you get to learn it. Alright, I'm just about out of time so I wanted you to get that. Fermata technique, it works.